We've talked quite a bit about cringe metal bands on this channel, and during that time I've been accused of finding anything remotely emotional to be cringe. It's a total fabrication. So today I thought I'd share 10 examples of metal bands that I don't find to be cringe in spite of their emotionally evocative material. And of course I realize this will be highly subjective, but we're kicking things off with Opeth. Ackerfeldt's clean vocals are like the finest velvet in sonic form, turning very classic tales of tragedy on par with those of the ancient Greeks into something I want to listen to over and over again. It would be so easy for the story of a heretic taking bloody revenge for the murder of his love to derail into an edgelord fantasy mess. And yet Ackerfeldt treats this tale as old as time with the utmost respect in poetic lines worthy of Shakespeare and Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> conveying all the pain and anguish without feeling the need to overplay his hand. In many ways, I consider Michael to be one of the last true bards of the old days, traveling town to town, singing tales of calamity and misfortune in soothing baritone without an ounce of pretension. To hope on my own as it rises in the morning. Next up is Periphery. Now I know a lot of people are going to really groan at this one, but Periphery is one of my favorite bands for sad boy scream-alongs. I love their heavy shit too, but if we're talking about that super emo stuff, great examples include Heavy Heart, Alpha, All New Materials, Scarlet, Remain Indoors, and especially It's Only Smiles and Mile Zero. The latter strikes me as a highly personal reflection on feeling the absence of someone who has passed, possibly by their own hand, and the former, despite its uplifting tone, seems to be about putting a happy face over feelings of grief and loss inside. But in both cases, they avoid most of the obvious cliché lines and leave it open to interpretation rather than treating the listener like an idiot. Somehow Palpatine returned. Not to mention the delivery of the lyrics and music is a masterclass in melody and songwriting. Then we have Dark Tranquility. There are so many examples I could get into with this classic melodic death metal band, especially on fiction, but when it comes to the song that most frequently comes to mind on this subject, I have just one word. Therein. Full admission that this seriously melodramatic track puts me on the verge of tears every time I hear it, and singing along to it live with a crowd of people was the best group therapy I've ever had. Am I crying? No, I'm not crying. You're crying. I'm not even fully certain as to what's being sung about, which continues the theme of keeping lyrics somewhat cryptic and unique to the writer, yet more than enough emotion is conveyed to pull me into the strangely cathartic melancholy. Another one that might ruffle some feathers, A Day to Remember. Memes about bands that write songs with the lyric, I hate this town aside, these guys are the epitome of smile while you sing along music. Tracks like Right Back At It Again are a masterclass in pop songwriting that is catchy and accessible with lyrics that are very relatable and slice of life. So They don't insist upon themselves as being profound, and better yet, frequently flex their self-awareness as with the intro of A Downfall of Us All and track names like Another Song About the Weekend. It insists upon itself, Lois. Even softer tracks like I Surrender and End of Me have this simple genuineness that keeps them from tipping over into eye-rolling territory, at least for me. Anyways, it's easy for me to see how this band became the kings of easycore, and I think this is a great example of how you can engage in genre tropes without losing yourself in the process. Up next is Evergrey. This is a band I've more recently taken to, and despite jokingly referring to them as Michael Bolton metal, somehow I don't find myself cringing at moments that should be peak cornball dentist office music. Why don't you just uh, go by Mike instead of Michael? 
No way. Why should I change? He's the one who sucks. Hell, The Beholder has a duet with James Labrie of Dream Theater that I know a lot of middle-aged women would absolutely devour, but ends up being a very thoughtful reflection on coming to terms with aging. So many words to discover. Now don't get me wrong, they've definitely had some cringe moment I talked about in the tier list, but as far as their more modern output is concerned, I'm pretty much all in. Even when some of the metaphors are overly familiar, it never feels like Tom England is overselling them in a try-hard way. Moving along, we have the Dillinger escape plan. This may seem like an odd pick, but the deeper you get into this discography, the more the atmospheric emotional tracks start to take hold amidst the mathy chaos. I think the first time I really started to take notice was the latter half of Farewell Mona Lisa, and then also closing out that same album with the moody, string-infused Parasitic Twins. When Greg shifts into that soft croon, you know you're in store for a transformational catharsis. And this is perhaps the most true of the closing title track of their final album, Dissociation. Every time I listen to that, that, there's just this overwhelming sense of finality as I reflect back on over a decade of memories related to following this band. This at least thankfully continues in the form of Greg's solo work and most recently with the incredibly powerful Lowered with Reba Myers of Code Orange. <laughs> Greg is both a poet when it comes to his always very intimate and personal writing style, and it doesn't hurt that his range and sense for old school pop sentiment is almost on par with that of Mike Patton. Then we have A Forest of Stars. <laughs> The shouted prose vocal style of this UK band is something you either love or hate, but personally I find it to be absolutely invigorating. I've described listening to their music as more akin to immersing yourself in a Broadway musical as opposed to any traditional black metal album. The lyrics are just so raw and evocative, washing over you in this cascade of sorrow. Even when expletives rear their head, it never feels gratuitous, instead only acting to punctuate the otherwise highly artistic word choices. Taking me away to the point that, as corny as it sounds, I kind of dissociate into the music. I feel like how I'm describing it may come off as pretentious, but somehow it's anything but. Despite a certain sense of class in its incorporation of strings and layered compositions, it's very down to earth. Then we have Protest the Hero. <laughs> Another one of my top, top picks when I need something to pick me up, with basically every track off of Volition in particular fitting that criteria. Now, I won't deny that the messaging at times can border on Preachy, but for the most part, it's Rhodey's more personal takes on lamenting a family cancer diagnosis on Tandem, or gushing about the band's trip to Newfoundland on Mist that really get me caught up in the moment. <laughs> Incredible riffing complement a lyrical style focused on storytelling that makes even the more political content of Palimpsest far more than some ham-fisted direct cry to fight the power or resist. No make America hate again or one mutilation under God cringe here. I award you no points and may God have mercy on your soul. Just fairly straightforward tales of descriptive situations that most people can relate to without it collapsing into schmaltz. And I also love their tongue-in-cheek sense of humor and wordplay on tracks like Sex Tapes and C'est La Vie. Now on the emotional flip side, we have Lingua Ignota. <laughs> If you want to hear some real depressing music about the true pain and horrors of life, nobody does it quite like Lingua Ignota. While so many bands translate this approach into cringe lyrics that come off as, Oh, poor me. Nobody likes me. I'm such a loner. No one likes me. My dog won't even look at me. My dog took a shit on the floor because they were so disgusted with me. God, no one's ever going to love me. Instead, Kristen Hader says, Hold my beer, and conjures all of her past and present trauma, spinning it into stunning artistic imagery and soul-rending performances. I don't eat, I don't sleep, I don't eat, I don't sleep. 
This is what I mean when I say you can cover heavy topics without romanticizing them, using metaphors and actual, you know, creativity to craft messages that go beyond surface level. For a result that is so harrowing that Kristen herself plans to retire the project for her own mental health. I think this also taps into the same inspiration I felt from the likes of Fiona Apple and Radiohead before I even got into metal to begin with. And then of course there's the Callous Dowboys. Carson Pace has become my modern go-to when people ask what I look for in lyrics. Even more so than Protest the Hero, the Callous Dowboys tackle some seriously divisive political topics in their music. But in many cases, you'd never even know it unless you're really paying attention. They don't need to wave a flag in your face or speak in hashtags to engage in the discourse. Instead, Carson often speaks in mixed metaphors, sardonic wordplay, double meanings, and outright riddles while still conveying the emotion in their performances and without ever feeling the need to explain. We will elaborate on that. No, I won't. <laughs> I honestly feel like this is the line most lyricists should aspire to when vocalists much older can only muster smooth brain anthems about punching people. If you'd like to see more videos on related topics, check out this playlist and let me know what bands you really enjoy on an emotional level but don't think are cringe. But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.